YouTubers, Mike Martin's here, Mike Martin's channel. I got a really good, really, really, really good article here from Zero Hedge, and it's by Tyler Durden, of course, <clears throat> the captain leader of the Fight Club. And I got a really, really good article here, and I'll leave a link below for you guys to read it. Australia has the world's worst money laundering property market. Yeah, shadow flipping. Hello, buy a house, then sell it to your friend, then sell it back to you, and then sell it back to your friend, and then you're rolling money into the country. Let's start reading. I wouldn't, I wouldn't call it money laundering. I'll call it money rolling. Transparency International has released a new report entitled Doors Wide Open, Corruption of Real Estate in Four Key Markets, which has identified Australia, Canada, UK, and the USA as a top four spots for targeted corrupt officials or criminals for real estate crime. So I don't know if you guys remember that article I read like three years ago or four years ago in 2013, I think it was, about how the RCMP knows that uh, there's a lot of uh, gangs involved overseas in buying property. Well, Australia is the worst falling to address 10 out of 10 loopholes. Wow. Below are the key extracts. The real estate market has long provided a way for individuals to sec uh, secretly launder or invest stolen money and other uh, illiteracy gained funds. Illegitimacy, like gained funds. According to the Financial Action Task Force, FATF, real estate uh, accountant for up to 30% of criminal assets confiscated worldwide between 2011 and 2013. In many such cases, property is purchased through anonymous shell companies or trusts without undergoing proper due diligence by the professionals involved in the deal. The ease uh, with what with which such anonymous companies or trusts can acquire property and launder money is directly related to insufficient rules and enforcement practices in attractive markets. The assessment identifies the following 10 main problems that the enabled corrupt individual and other criminal criminals to easily purchase luxurious properties anonymously and hide their stolen money in Australia, Canada, the UK, and the US, English-speaking countries. Uh, ina inadequate coverage of anti-money laundering provision. Number two, identification of beneficial owners of legal entities, trusts, and other legal arrangements is still not the norm. Foreign companies have access to real estate market with few requirements or checks. Over-reliance and due diligence checks by financial institutions leads to cash transactioning going unnoticed. Insufficient rules on suspicion transaction report and weak implementation. Number six, uh, weak or no checks on policy exposed to persons to their associates. Well, that kind of matches what number four said, but that's okay. Limited control over professional professionals who can engage in real estate transactions, no fit for proper test, uh, basically um, basically t checking their total debt service ratios to make sure that the, 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 the deal fits, limited understanding of action or no money laundering risks in the sector, inconsistent supervision, lack of sanctions. Australia has severe deficiencies in all 10 areas identified in the research and in therefore not in line with the commodities to tackle cor uh, corruption and money laundering in the real estate in international forms. So back to what I said is um, the problem is, is Australia needs to do this because Australia is no longer producing like they used to back in the 1920s and 1930s. Production is like flatlined and everything's been outsourced to, to uh, uh, cheap labor. And that's a big problem. In Australia, the real estate agents are not subject to the provisions of the Anti-Money money Laundering and Counterterrorism Facing Act of 2006. Other professionals, such as lawyers and accountants, who may also play a role in the sector, are not covered either. This means that properties can be bought and sold without due diligence on the parties. Currently, there are no requirements for real estate agents or any professional involved in the real estate deals to submit ST, STRS, STRs, even if they suspect illegal activity in taking place. And there is no requirements of rules for verifying whether the customer customers are, are peeps 
or their close associates. In Australia, Canada, and the U.S., the current anti-money laundering framework shows the tendency to rely on financial institutions to conduct necessary background checks on real estate transactions that are no checks across transaction. In Australia, 70% of Chinese uh, buyers pay in cash, and they represent a large portion of foreign purchases in the country. So this goes into a little bit of in-depthness here, a little bit. Um, I want you guys to read this, and oh, it shows right here. New Zealand, Australia, Great Britain, Canada, the United States. So yeah, New Zealand's hit pretty hard, and I know Australia is too. But this is this is what's happening, guys, and uh, it's sold out, basically sold out. And they they play the race card on everything. So if you say anything, you are a racist. Somebody else breaks the law, I am a racist. So there's nothing really no one could do about it. You know what I'm saying? It's we're at a point right now where basically all the Commonwealth countries have pretty much sold out to the highest bidder, right? If it was reverse, like let's say this happened in Brazil, like let's say Brazil for an example, or well, Mexico. Mexico's better. The Mexico's the best. If this happened in Mexico, they just they just shut everything down. They wouldn't they wouldn't they wouldn't put up with it. You know what I'm saying? So the problem is now if we can't if I can't afford to live, in, I'll give you an example. If I can't afford to live in Canada. There's nowhere else I could live. I mean, I could go back to my, my country of origin, Portugal. Let's pretend I have no other country of origin. Portugal is amazing, by the way, South Portugal. But I'm saying, let's say I had no root country to go back to, okay? Let's just say, I can't go to Mexico because they're not allowed to immigrate there. It's impossible to get into the U.S., okay, from Canada. It's impossible to do, to get into, like, different countries. It's, like, next to impossible. It's impossible to immigrate to a country like Belize. Let's say I wanted to immigrate to Belize or Nicaragua. Impossible. You have to go through so many loopholes to immigrate there, and then you're not allowed to buy there. There's so many laws in, in Nicaragua. Same thing with uh, Colombia. If I wanted to move to Colombia, even if I married a Colombian woman, she would own everything. I can never own anything because I am not a Colombian. So it would be very hard for me, let's say if I was only a Canadian, I'm dual, I'm Canadian Portuguese. So I can live in the Portuguese Commonwealth, Angola, Mozambique, Brazil, Guinea-Bissau, Cabo Verde, Timor Leste by Australia there. But being in the English, like and I had, if I didn't have a background like that, I'd be screwed because I couldn't go anywhere. I couldn't immigrate nowhere else. There was nowhere I, nowhere I could go. So what happens when the people can't afford to buy locally? You know what I'm saying? What happens to them? They can't go anywhere else. I don't know. Maybe I'm over speculating. Maybe, you know, I've seen a lot of uh, underwriting deals, especially through banks. I used to be a regional manager of a major institution back when, when in my 20s, when I was young. And um, it was, it, I've seen a lot of underwriting, a lot of underwriting, underwriters changing things. So the total debt service ratio will fit to pass the deal. So the loan will pass, the mortgage would pass, uh, the land deal would pass. And a lot of, you know, bumps in the road that should have been uh, declined, but they went through anyway so they could meet quotas and hit goals, right? I don't know, guys. I don't know anything. Comment below. Let me know what you guys think. I I'd like to know. It it's important. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.